All right guys, the project today is spraying a lacquer top coat onto these cabinet parts. We're refacing a cabinet, so we've made new doors and new drawer fronts. They've been stained at this point and we're ready for the lacquer top coat. We're gonna be using a turbine-based spray system with a gravity feed HVLP gun. So we'll show you step-by-step -step how we set up the workroom to prepare for spraying, clean the parts off, lay down that first coat of lacquer, little scuff sanding in between coats, and then that second coat for a nice furniture quality finish. Stick around, we'll jump right into it. So we've got all of our parts laid out on Painter's Pyramid. The stain has had a chance to dry for at least 24 hours. And one thing that's really handy to have is a holder, particularly if you're using a gravity feed style gun. Obviously these are hard to set down. So what I do is I have a holder and then I put a big heavy magnet on the bottom of it. And that just seems to keep it from sliding and keep it in place even when the finish adds a little weight to the gun. So have that at the ready, one if not two of these gun holders just so you can free your hands up when you need to flip these doors and drawers over. Blow things off with a little compressed air to get started and I'll show you my other work surface that I have ready to lay parts out. So I also have a secondary work table laid out. It's got some thin strips of lumber on it. I use that to rest the work pieces so I can spray the back side. And then I go ahead and flip it over and bring it back to my main work area to hit the edges and the top face. You'll want a bunch of lights positioned around the shop and put them at kind of a low raking angle. That'll highlight the finish as it goes on. You can't do a good job spraying if you can't see your work. If you only get one thing right about spray finishing, make it this, work in a well-ventilated area. I've always got a side man door open with fan running, plus a main garage bay open to spray. Now we're working with a lacquer and it does have some compounds in there that modify the sheen of the finish. So of course you'll stir your can well. My personal rule on this is to never put anything into the spray gun that isn't filtered. And so to that end, I just use a disposable filter canister here. Put that right over the cup of the gun and then you'll just be able to load your gun from there. Now we're using a 1.0 millimeter spray tip today. That's really nice for a fine finish on lacquers. You can use a 1.3 tip is the tip that comes with the gun. I've switched it out for a 1.0 millimeter tip because I just really want that fine finish. And I, I do like the way it sprays this particular lacquer. And so we're not gonna thin this product very much. We might put in a half a cup of lacquer thinner and fill the remainder with our unthinned lacquer. It's also really handy to have just a spare drip cup that you can let your filter drip down into and leave any filling containers you have. Okay, so we'll get the cap on and set out to put on that first coat. We'll be spraying with the Fuji Q5 Platinum Turbine today, and we'll have the variable speed knob adjusted about halfway up. We'll go ahead and fire up the unit and get started. So I try to overlap my passes by about 50% for good even coverage. We're hitting the back of drawer fronts here. These will get flipped over and set out on painter's pyramids to coat the front surfaces. Here on the back of cabinet doors, we're just trying to get nice even coverage, again overlapping about 50% with each pass. Anytime I can spray parts horizontally laid out flat, 
I would choose that over a vertical application just because the finish lays out so nice. You don't have to let the backside dry. Just go ahead and flip them over on the painter's points and you can start coating the edges and front faces of your parts. You're going to hold the gun about 8 inches from the surface and you will spray perpendicular to the surface when possible, especially that last couple passes to get a good even coat on the front of your parts. But there are also times where you're going to have to have a, a little bit of finesse to your spraying. You want to get good surface coverage on the edges as well, so you'll be spraying at an angle first. Then you'll straighten things out to finish up. In certain situations, you want to try to avoid a, a rain shadow with your spray, particularly with cabinet doors that have a recessed panel. There'll be a natural whip effect that happens to orient the spray into the recess and the corners. Make sure you get good coverage. So after the first coat of lacquer, you'll want to scuff sand things a little bit with a very light, soft sanding sponge. I'm usually working in the 800 to 1000 range between the two coats. And once you get everything nice and smooth, we'll go ahead and dust things off with a little bit of cheesecloth. An important distinction, we're not talking about tack cloth, which is actually impregnated with chemicals to make it tacky. Instead, I really recommend cheesecloth. It's just the basic hardware store variety, but it does a great job at quickly removing that dust, getting you ready for the second coat. You'll have the best results if you pull your workpiece down off of the painter's pyramid while you're sanding, just to avoid little dimples or dents on the backside. And honestly, it just takes touching that surface with this super fine grit sandpaper, and you'll get that nice smooth finish here after. Second layer just adds to the coating thickness.
All right, guys, there you go. Furniture quality finish that you can apply with a turbine sprayer in your own shop. If you're new to spray finishing, give it a try. If you have the right equipment, this is something that anybody can learn. And I promise you, once you try it, you won't go back to the old school methods. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.